Welcome to the Silverado Spinsters from Napa and Davis, California. Look at that lovely black fleece. Wensleydale and Cormo, really nice luster. There's the fiber structure. We use pop locks from Clemis and Clemis to open our fiber and it just really does a great job. Here's the open locks ready to spin. We're spinning a single. We're spinning it at about 10, 12 ends per inch. This is a lazy Kate holding bobbins ready to ply for the yarn. This is the warp yarn that we're going to be using, as well as white and gray. We're using Lendrum spinning wheels. Here is the black wool spun. The finished yarns, a close-up detail. And the finished warp yarns. The white is a Wensleydale Cormo Merino. The gray is a Coriadale, and the black is that lovely Wensleydale Cormo. The draft we're using has a Fibonacci sequence to it, showing the different shadings and stripes. This is our weft, six ounces, ready to spin. Silverado Spinsters. Right now we're in Davis and it's probably about 70 something degrees. It's a gorgeous spring day. Um, Deb, do you want to tell us about the shawl and your ideas for the design? I was inspired by a boat, a Swedish codice industry sweater called the Swan, in which there was a, there was, um, a very subtle transitioning of black and white into into a white, uh, predominantly white sweater. I just really like that subtle kind of ombre effect in that sweater that I, that was the idea for uh, creating a Fibonacci um, foundation for the shawl with the subtle transition between the colors. I'll turn it over to Kat to talk a little bit about the wools and what, what the breeds are. So one of the things that we've learned about fleece selection for sheep to shawl is that if you get something that's too fine and too crimpy, you'll have so much take up when it comes off the loom that you probably won't meet the minimum requirements. And so we like to look pieces that are fine, but that have a minimum crimp for their breed. It's a um, silver young Corydale from Nancy Burns' ranch. It's called Marble Peak Ranch in Northern California. Nice silver gray, but that didn't have a lot of crimp. And uh, the other two fleeces in the warp, uh, that this gray fleece is going to be the predominant fleece also in the warp, but it's interspersed with stripes of white and also black. And both the black and the white fleece come from Potter Valley, California, a ranch from Peggy Agnew, which is Red Creek Farms. And she uh, has this really interesting combination of uh, uh, Wensleydale and Merino and some um, and Cormo in, and we really like the Wensleydale infusion into the fleece because it adds so much luster because we, we like using local fleeces when we can. So everything in this shawl is from California. Uh, Christy, do you want to talk a little bit about the spinning? Uh, we spun um, a, a little bit fatter yarn than we usually spin been for the warp. Uh, we were aiming for about 12 ends per inch and we put a little bit less twist into it because we wanted it to be a full, soft, nice hand on the yarn. It's 
spinning up very nice, very beautiful. It's, it's very clean fiber, and uh, it's, it's going to have a lot of air in it, so I think it should have a really nice hand. Deborah, how did you start spinning? Um, I worked as a veterinarian on the Navajo Reservation, and that was where I was first introduced to the concept of spinning. And when I came to graduate school at Davis, um, I discovered there was a spinning class. So I took that class, didn't touch my wheel for about seven years after that, until I was studying for qualifying exams for my PhD and ended up using spinning as a meditation to kind of calm down and maintain my sanity. <laughs> Well, my, my grandmother taught me how to knit when I was in grade school. And uh, I was, I've always been fascinated with being able to do things start to finish on your own. And which is also why I like cheese making and, <laughs> you know, other hobbies that I've taken up over the years. And uh, so, Along about, it was 1999, I think, I quit smoking. And uh, I was dreaming about cigarettes all the time. <laughs> and so I was looking, I, I also work at the university, and so I started looking through the catalog for the craft center of all the different classes you could take. And I ran across spinning, and I thought, well, this could be interesting because I really like to know how to make things from the very beginning. And so I took a spinning class. Um, and Deborah was my teacher. <laughs> Sometime after that, she said, hey, we're going to be doing this sheet to shawl. Why don't you come along? And I said, okay, what the heck? And so the rest <laughs> is history. How about you, Christy? Uh, it was a Renaissance fair back when it was uh, at the Black Point Forest and saw somebody with a drop spindle and it just fascinated me. Uh, like you, I always like the process and, and how things are made and how it's done. I knit at the time and I just thought that would be too cool to make your own yarns and to be able to do that. And I couldn't find a, a class and kind of forgot about it. And then later on uh, in the Solano College catalog, uh, there were my friend Pat Slavin who was teaching a spinning class. And I was so excited and signed up for it and actually took it twice. Just fell in love with it. Why, why did we pick the Maryland sheep to shawl? <laughs> oh. we've, we've done quite a few in California. but In Oregon. And Oregon. In Oregon. Uh, we've done the black sheep several times. Well, we always thought it would be fun to try something new. <laughs> and uh, and this time around, we, we didn't have to travel or bring a sheep across the country. <laughs> or shear. Yep. <laughs> so it seemed like the, the perfect time to give it a try. And unfortunately, there's no silk in the, the lab. <laughs> Deborah dreams of a sheep to shawl that's all silk. I don't know exactly how a that would to work. Shawl, huh? Worm to shawl. Could be interesting. Hi, Christy Redford. Uh, the Silverado Spinsters, and I'm gonna start winding some bobbins. We're at Marianne's house in Napa, and it is a gorgeous day. It's gonna be 75 today. And here we are with Marianne our weaver. And how long have you been weaving? I have been weaving about six years now, going on seven years. And what do you like weaving best? 
Well, normally I weave with cotton uh, more than wool, but um, you know, I just started learning how to weave by making dish towels. You know, I just did a variety of different patterns, went through the hand weavers book. So kind of my go-to is uh, hand weave, uh, dish towels, but I have branched out into blankets and scarves and just spent rag rugs lately. So um, this is pretty exciting to be part of this competition. What drew you to weaving? What made you want to start? Um, I have always been interested in textiles. I've worked in the apparel industry for over 40 years. Um, learned how to sew as a young girl. And so I've always had my fingers on textiles. And so when I uh, happened to come across some, a weaver, um, I thought, oh my gosh, this is what I want to do. <laughs> to do. So I, took the bull by the horns and started taking weaving classes and I just, you know, just love it. So what, tell me about your loom. This is a Gilmore uh, 32 inch uh, four shaft loom. It happened to belong to one of our um, guild members who's now deceased, but I bought it from the estate. And uh, so uh, Elska who used to um, weave with and spin with the uh, Silverado spinsters um, this is her loom, so I feel uh, a lot of good, good mojo coming from this loom right she now. She would be excited. Tell us a little bit about the weave structure and pattern and what kind of shuttles you're using. We are going to do a twill, straight uh, twill today. Um, we are, um, we have a variety, three different colors in here. We have a dark charcoal gray, almost black, and a white and um, a gray. Um, and we're doing weaving with singles today. The warp is all uh, applied. And, um, we're using the gray uh, singles here. And I'm, these are, I think these are shack shuttles. And I'm going to try a two-fisted <laughs> shuttle um, system here because we have, because they're singles and we weren't able to ply them or didn't ply them. Um, we just want to make sure we get a variety of the spinners who, um, of their yarns. We are measuring the width on the loom and it is 24 inches. Now you can really see the Fibonacci sequence across the shawl, the distinctive stripes. So we can um, put it out on my table out there and measure it. Looking good. So we wove to 85 inches, mm -hmm. and here's how the finish looks before wet finishing. It looks nice. Got a lovely drape. Oh, it sure does. Now some close-ups of the shawl so you can see the detail, the natural variations of the fiber, and the colors and fiber.
Shawl's all laid out, ready for the finishing touches and weaving in the ends. Success!